guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 14. Hasu League, Round of 32, Group G. We have ATI going up against Tucson. This is the winner's match on Ascension. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Tucson starting as the Purple Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have ATI starting as the Peach, skin-colored. We'll call it skin. Skin-colored Protoss. This is going to be on Ascension, which is one of those maps that I like... I like Protoss play on, mostly because there's that third you can walk down on and attack with Dragoons. There's also Zealot openers that can be a little bit more aggressive because of a lack of a ramp. You've got kind of the double entrance near the edge. I, as far as the Twitch audience who is filtering in now, I am unsure as to whether or not I'm going to be able to get to the round of 16, but I do believe I'm going to be able to finish this group today. And Tucson really showing strong play versus 80's mullet. And actually, with that level of play, especially with the decisiveness, I would not be shocked to see him make it into the final four. ATI is going to have his work cut out for him. Looks like initially he's going to do scout after pylon. He's going to scout the 12 o'clock location first and go ahead and plop down a gateway. Let's see if he opts for any early zealots. Usually when you don't have... Usually when you have the pylon at... A further back location like this, alongside the Vespin Geyser, it is more often or not just going to go Dragoon play. First barrack being barracks being placed. Have that nice little defensive gap where Marines can run back and forth just in case there was early zealot pressure, and we are seeing an assimilator very rapidly. Go ahead and get that gas in. Get that gas. I do want to say that uh Yeah, well I, I have I think when I've seen Tucson briefly in the past, he executed a two factory push, and I don't remember where that was even, but he executed it rather well. I'm wondering if he's gonna opt to do that here. Refinery is coming online. Probe sneaking across. Gonna go ahead and make, this has gotta be one of those, if you just like walk across Zergigs like on an alien planet, I guess this is like par for the course for them. Three SCV are on gas. Initially, we'll see if that shifts or if it's just going to be one of those things that pulls off once this probe is taken care of first marine in production in the meantime the scv scout checking the 12 o'clock location finding nothing it's going to make the way across and it looks like it's going to be straight to cybernetic score for ati no zealot first so the first marine trying to go ahead and push and yeah not even going to bother pulled two scv off gas to go ahead and get that first factory down in the lower corner which suggests we are going to see one factory into expansion and let's see if ATI opts to, after he gets that first Dragoon, if he's just going to save the minerals, which I think he might. Just get that first Dragoon, plug the gap, take care of the SCV, maybe go for an expansion himself. Two Marines on the low ground boxed out that probe. Somehow that probe sneaking out, but still wants to hang out near the natural expansion, potentially to get a bit of interruption. A probe walking out towards the natural expansion, I believe, to place that Nexus. Let's see if that, is there going to be an eBay block? That would actually be kind of fun. Looks like Tucson's just going to go ahead and back off that probe now in position to go ahead and drop that Nexus. The probe, this Marine got the kill. I missed it. This Marine got the kill. Looks like a machine shop initially was being dropped, but now it's going to get canceled. And I think, yeah, with that SCV scouting, realizing that it was going to be a faster Nexus, wants to try to sneak out that Vulture first. But there's no bunker. Just going to try to rely on these three Marines to fend off the single Dragoon. And that is a winnable fight, but... That's going to leave, I guess with the Vulture in particular, that, that is a win. But it's still somewhat of a risk. So the Dragoon moving in, not able to plug the gaps. So the Vulture is going to be able to make its way out. A 4th Marine now joining the fray. That bunker is going to have time to get planted. And that SCV walking right back in. The Dragoon actually just walking straight up. Wants to get the Marine kills. Got an A Marine kill, but took a lot of damage. So completely shredded the shield. That did get into base health. Range is being upgraded. Oftentimes we've seen Protoss skip range to opt for... Robotics facilities and other things along those lines. This Dragoon going ahead and assailing that SCV on the way out. Just going to shoot it in the butt as it's trying to flee. The second Dragoon, let's see if it's going to go and uh, try to take care of that. We do have this Vulture that could potentially swing into the natural expansion. This is a little bit what you do need to plant pylons. And you can see it's a pretty wide choke. Vulture could sneak by. Range is going to be there to help. And it looks like it's going to be, yeah, just one gate expansion robotics facility and a second gateway behind this. So a very, very economic build. For ATI. Machine Shop is there, but mines have not been researched yet. And the SCV, that's kind of a nice little buddy thing. It's like the two guys that are out in the front 
joining forces and high-fiving, swapping stories. First tank being produced, engineering bay being produced as well, and an armory plopping down for Tucson, which suggests we're going to go for more of that level 2 weapon, level either a level 1 weapon play or potentially that level, th uh, level 2, level 1 weapon play, or maybe even, depending on how things look down the line, a uh, third expansion with a whole bunch of troops on the ground. I feel like the 5 factory thing, so SCV walking up, confirming the Dragoon count, also got a little bit of a peek at the natural expansion. I don't think it confirmed the Vespin Geyser, though, which is usually a bit of information. It's journey made to respect potential DTs. And this is interesting. Tucson already opening up that the Lurker Egg front just to go ahead and be able to have more maneuverability between the main and the natural expansion, just in case there were potentially Reavers coming this direction. No Reaver yet, though, just the observatory. Just the observatory. So ATI, I think he wants to go ahead and sneak to a quick third expansion and force Tucson to play from here. But Tucson, he's still sitting on one factory and has actually paused tank production a little bit. I would not be shocked to see him go for a rapid third uh, once he's scouted all of this. We do have a handful of Dragoons and Zelts on the front. Both players macroing up right now, about dead even on the worker count. Which is usually pretty good for Terran ATI, about that 11 supply lead, which you usually see from Protoss. ATI's observer meandering across the field to go ahead and see what he can see. Second gas being grabbed now for Tucson. And let's see if he, yeah, goes ahead and adds on another factory and another machine shop. He is just producing non-stop tanks out of this one machine shop factory. But I still, yeah, this still looks to me, this is caster instinct more than anything that rather than a plus one weapons push, this is maybe going to be more of a play to get a quick third. Observer spotting the corner, seeing that there are turrets they are going to go ahead and back off, but seeing a very light tank count on the front, really, I feel like Tucson kind of skimped on a lot of stuff. Skimped on tanks, skimped on, and but really has not been punished at all by ATI. ATI just continued to play the macro game, and it looks like ATI is going to go ahead and grab that third. Vulture nearby, I don't think mines have been upgraded, so we've skipped mines upgrade, speed upgrade, second machine shop now being dropped, just a handful of siege tanks being built, so a lot of corners cut out of Tucson's build to potentially go for, well, we'll see what he, uh, just with these two machine shop, uh, the two factories of the two machine shops, I think he's still just going to go for a quick third and try to play a long-term macro game. ATA blocking that northern corridor, which is absolutely vital, but still has not grabbed a second gas and is still sitting on just four gateways, now getting Zealot leg speed. So both players going for the more macro-oriented style of play. More siege tanks, so now we have two additional factories being dropped. Plus one weapons just about to come online. And this is kind of one of those middling of the road things where you can attack with this if you want, if your Protoss opponent is getting greedy, but you can also go ahead and just grab your third if they have plenty of attack forces. This Vulture is going to go ahead and scoot and see what's going on. Going to sneak into that natural expansion and I think sees the shuttle, but also sees a pretty light Dragoon count. And this is now, what, six siege tanks potentially to go attack the front, plus the Marines if they wanted to unload that bunker. So this could be... And this is, I like the large amount of siege tanks to potentially go for a third if that is decided. But it looks like we are seeing that starport being dropped. Plus one weapons is online. So this is going to go ahead to get that plus two weapons and I assume a second armory. And go for that play. Speed and mines being upgraded at the nearly nine minute mark. And still no second gas from ATI. ATI is moving towards Gateway Man. Feels like he's in a strong economic position grabbing his third well in front of Tucson, and that does seem to be the preferred style of play for, it seems like, practically every Protoss I've seen in this grouping, but this is a flood of gateways, so we got, what, eight, so that's six, eight, nine, nine gateways off three bases, and it is just going to be a macro race from here, and there potentially is just going to be one gigantic clash to see who decides it and who advances and who gets knocked out from here. Vulture is now being added on, so this could be and a science facility. So the science facility there now to start plus two weapons, but no second... Okay, there's a the second armory behind it. But this is a still a, a lot of troops that could potentially be a threat or could potentially just go out and seal and cap that third and make the way towards 200-200. And that could just be what we're going to see is both players just going for a flat macro race to hit 200-200 and play from there. 
ATI wandering out with a probe potentially to go ahead and grab a fourth. Vultures are streaming across the map. It doesn't look like they're going to be in position to see this probe. But the Siege Tanks, yeah, just walking down, wandering around the third base. And I believe this is, yeah, just going to be an on-spot Nexus. And ATI just letting it happen. Not even concerned about it. The Observer sees it. He's just going to go ahead and grab his fourth base. Some Dragoons are moving forward with this Zealot Force. There are mines on the high ground. The Observer needs to sweep down to help clear this. It looks like... Ooh, some big mine hits. Softening up the Zealots, at the very least. Also, upgrades on the other side. Whoop, click a unit. I don't even know that we have a forge yet. So this is going to be gateway... Okay, so we have double forge, but upgrades are not yet spinning. So the upgrade advantage is going to be on Tucson's favor. Some Zealot bombs trying to clear out some mines, and it looks like some vultures on the front managed to take out a vulture with that. But yeah, ETI a little bit late, to be honest, to go ahead and provide any sort of pressure on this third, and still no fourth. So the probe that was to the north, for whatever reason, meandering to the 9 o'clock position, perhaps not feeling safe with the large troop count underneath, knowing that Tucson potentially could push and attack with that plus one weapons, and hold the third simultaneously. So he's going to go ahead and just try to have a staggered position here. Now sending out another probe to go ahead and wander up. Floating a lot of minerals here to go ahead and grab an additional base. Worker count in Tucson's favor. Saturated on three bases. Three bases versus three base. That's usually Terran favored. And it is, yeah, just gateway flood from here. Now plus one weapons. Plus one armor being upgraded. And the commsat hitting the Stargate perfectly. So seize the double Stargates and the shift to air tech of some form. I think this might be carriers because we did not see an Arbiter Tribunal building simultaneously. And I don't know that... To, so never mind, dropping an Arbiter. So it's going to be double Stargate Arbiter. But by the time plus two weapons, plus one armor hits, there's just not going to be any Arbiters in the air. And I don't think ADI with his macro has kept up. Let Tucson play his game. Tucson's macro has just been on point. He's got all sorts of troops. He's got a bunch of gateways. And momentarily, he's going to be able to move across the map. And this is not sufficient enough. There's not additional shuttles. I don't see any High Templar as part of this army. This is a very enclosed area. It's not like a huge open field where you can preemptively position and attack from multiple directions. So Tucson potentially could run ATI over. He's also got an SCV hanging out, maybe to grab a fourth. I would be shocked, actually, if he grabbed his, uh, a fourth instead of just attacking into this. And just bullying his way forward. We'll see momentarily. Plus two weapons, about 30 seconds off. More Dragoons, more Zealots making their way forward. Now it's imperative that ATI actually holds this high ground as long as possible. Mine's being dropped, so yeah, Tucson grouping up to go ahead and make that push. We do have two additional Nexus being taken in the upper right and upper left-hand corner. And now ATI dropping on top of this. The Zealots getting bossed out. Looks like this is a pretty decent attack. Some Zealot bombs behind this, but the Vultures wiping out those dropped Zealots. The shuttle's been taken out. More Dragoons peeling forward, but this is still a huge amount of siege shanks. This is high ground to low ground, though. And that high ground to low ground is kind of disguising how sizable this army is. And actually, Tucson might have misread it as well, seeing the double star game. You might have thinking, okay, maybe this was a carrier switch, but now... This is, I think this is all the units that ATI has, and there's still a slew of siege tanks. This is a full control group at least. I think this is a full control group plus of siege tanks moving forward. Tucson grabbing his fourth, because he can get aggressive, start swatting down bases and attacking forward. A couple of those Goliaths getting pushed out of position. Siege tanks up on the high ground now. Now, does Tucson just play with the four base and feel comfortable with this, or does he start attacking forward? I think the correct answer is go attack forward. You got to... I don't know if he realizes how sizable his supply lead is. Some vultures can just go ahead and peel off to the north. Do some damage. Or he can just go ahead and press up and pin ATI into his natural expansion. Some probes in transfer. It looks like there are a handful of High Templar as part of this attack force. I assume Psystorm's there. But still no Arbiters and still no Stasis or anything else. No spells to really assist with this attack so maybe there's a decent size storm catching a lot of units but also catches the observer another size storm but honestly i don't know that it caught enough of the siege tanks to make a significant difference so the vultures and the siege tanks just peeling forward that third is certainly at risk and honestly the natural expansions at risk as well 
Tucson now gathering up. He can just go ahead and reinforce, hold the high ground, and siege from the high position. ATI now pushing in. No science vessel, so it's just going to be Comsat to try to push this back, but this is an absolute skeleton crew to try to push back siege tanks and vultures with plus two weapons, plus one armor on the high ground. The Dragoons are gone. The third base is exposed and breached. The Arbiter doesn't have anything to stop it, and that's like the only... I mean, maybe after years and years of pounding away with your energy, you're very weak. It's like a flashlight, basically. You're like trying to kill something with a flashlight. So that third is gone. There are two additional bases for ATI, so he's not out of this yet. But it's not that long before this could just walk into that natural expansion. Plus, the vultures are peeling off, potentially to check out those additional expansions at the upper right and upper left-hand corner. And these aren't even saturated. Okay, sorry, the upper left is saturated. But the bottom, the upper right is not yet even saturated. So this base looks like that can get wiped out by vultures alone. ATI now trying to retake his front, but Tucson is rapidly reinforcing. He's running on four bases. He's got a huge amount of factories behind this. It's going to be a moment before there's a science vessel, I assume, that can join the fray. Vulture swinging across. It looks like he wants to go ahead and move position to cap the natural expansion as well. ATI having larger attack forces, and it looks like Tucson actually having a bit of a dwindling siege tank count finally a stasis down so ati might be able to breach the contain towards the third but he's going to end up losing one of his bases as a result of this and i think he's not in a position to defend the expansion in the upper left additionally tucson's gone ahead and grabbed additional gaze so he, he uh, an additional base so he's sitting on four bases comfortably with a sizable army these vultures are completely unopposed and it's just going to be a moment before additional factories, additional siege tanks. Actually, I would expect a third and maybe even fourth machine shop here. Level 3 weapons also going to come online. There's the science vessel alongside. Try to look at the... Finally, level 1 weapons, level 1 armor is there for ATI. But this is... And he is going to be able to clean up a handful of siege tanks. But the Arbiters are going to start filtering in. So it has a little bit of breathing room. But this just feels like too little too late. His main is looking thin. His natural expansion is still... I'll call that half a base right here. The upper left is online. He needs to keep that. And he's basically just relying on the fact that that hasn't been scouted to stay up. So continue to try. To, and he's playing gateway, man, which means he needs to stay ahead in the overall macro war to win. Vulture is now finding that upper left-hand corner. Looks like a handful of mines being left. That pylon, there are two pylons. ATI scrambling an attack force to the upper left to go ahead and defend that. Tucson grabbing yet another base. If you're ahead, get more ahead. Vultures also floating up here. Dropping a lot of mines before this army's in place. So that's going to slow ATI down, and that's going to cause a lot of these probes to be emptied from this position. Comsat being dropped so the probes can be scanned. And Tucson now putting on a clinic. You can see the flood of troops trying to crumb across. Those vultures just going to go ahead and exit now that that base is empty. But Tucson near 200 supply. He's got a base that he doesn't even need to mine out of yet. Vultures flying everywhere. Might even be able to find High Templar. The High Templar are getting picked off. Drop, forced to drop Psystorm on the Vultures. Eating some shield of their own Zealots. And yeah, you can just... This army looks dejected. That's what that army looks like to me. And I can just... Yeah. Poor ATI's army. Third base back up and running. But... Not any probes at it currently. In case there were, the vultures are right there. This army's out of position to go ahead and engage. And the army's not moving for ATI at this second. I think he is at a loss as to how to get back in this match. Mines being planted, wiping a lot of troops. And again, more High Templar are being picked off before they're even able to drop Storm. ATI finally moving this army midfield. It looks like he's going to go for one counterattack. He's like, maybe if I can go for attack at the main, I can equalize things. But he's getting harangued by mines. And there's already a Goliath force and a huge a phalanx of siege tanks. So all Tucson needs to do is hit 200 and just walk around the map. At the, he's completely stymied ATI's economy. Literally obliterated it. More vultures now moving up to attack the upper left. Three cannons aren't going to cut it. And ATI is just going to get strangled out right now. Completely starved of resources. So the mains mined out. You have idle probes. Natural expansion's gone. Three clock base is down before it was even mining. And the reinforcements trying to come across still running into mines. 
No probes left in the upper left, and I think that is going to be it. ATI. Maybe with what he... I mean, he's got just got a skeleton crew of attack forces. His economy has been so pulverized this entire time. Half the supply. Tucson now moving out. He can take his time and pick and choose where he wants to attack as well. Stargate silent. We do have upgrades running. This is a level 3 weapons Terran army. Probes in transfer trying to get upper left. Tucson just walking up. One Arbiter down. Two Arbiter down. That was some nice stasis. Third Arbiter is in position, but it's just... That is way too many. Let's back up and look. That's too many siege tanks. Despite the fantastic stasis... Stasi, it's just not enough. And ATI knows it. Going to call GG right there. Tucson moves on to the round of 16 in a commanding fashion. ATI will be going to the final match to face the winner of 80's Mullet versus... Uh, who am I forgetting here? Why am I blanking? I even got it in this... Whatever. <laughs> uh, XTO. XTO. I love XTO. 80's Mullet XTO. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.